number one retro podcast. I am your host for this week, Chad Conselmo. <laughs> Join me. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh man, I get weirder every week. Um, joining me this week are my BFFs, Topher Cantler, Pino Gicandes, Colette Bennett, Secret of Mana! <laughs> And Stella Wong. Slammy drum! <laughs> oh my. Just, okay, I don't want to spoil it, but just, <laughs> my, be prepared for my flammy drum excitement later oh. on in the show. I have a whole I'll section of that. <laughs> Sweet. That is awesome. Okay. Oh. I thought I was the only one. No, no, no. You are definitely not the only one. Be prepared. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, everyone. We're happy to have you here. Um, you guys are all amazing. So before we get started, um, I wanted to say this is episode 64, and just so people know, we actually did consider doing this episode on the Nintendo 64 because it's episode 64, because a lot of people in the comments were saying, no, it's not the Nintendo 64. We considered it, but we thought we'd just hold off on the Nintendo 64, because that's more of like a retro limbo topic, and we just did a retro limbo show, so we thought we should spread it out. Why didn't we do Commodore 64, huh? Huh? Oh shit! Huh? Think that. Yeah, Topher, why'd you ruin that. it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could have done that. Damn it, Topher! <laughs> what we could? I didn't want to do that. But people had some amazing <laughs> ideas. So, but at least we're acknowledging it. So, yeah, Nintendo 64 would, or Commodore 64 would have been an awesome thing. But obviously, we chose Secret of Mana this week for a specific reason because it came out on the Virtual Console, and um, yes, we can't really wait any longer to do this because it's the best week ever. So yeah, in your face, Nintendo in 64. Face. In your face, you're a big disgrace. Word. <laughs> oh damn, somebody just got served. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, oh yes, and I also have to mention, this is probably the biggest news of the Retro Force week, besides Secret of Mana, of course. Um, we have... dun 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 yeah, I don't know how. I don't know if I'm prepared for this awesomeness. You guys have to. Everyone has to hold on to something that's listening to the show. If you're driving, pull over because this is a ma- major news. As of this week, we officially have Retro Force Go T-shirts. Oh my Ooh, god! Yes, oh, so exciting. Honestly, you guys are not prepared for this. They are pretty much. I, Topher and Colette and Stella can agree. They pretty much are the greatest T-shirts ever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, there's, awesome. it's pretty much no other way of describing it. Uh, you will get the whole scoop tomorrow. Dyson is going to post... Dyson, the mysterious missing Dyson. He's actually going to post a story tomorrow, giving you the details about where you can buy the t-shirts and what they look like. I won't ruin it on the show. Um, you can you can check back tomorrow. But I'm telling you right now, they're the, the most amazing thing ever. And the minute they are officially done, which I think is like tomorrow, um, I'm going to be wearing mine every single day. I'm literally never going to change my clothes. <laughs> I'm going to wear that one. t-shirt everywhere I go. Uh, and hopefully everyone listens to the show will buy one. So you can all support the show and everyone will think you're cool. You'll literally walk down the street and, and women will literally just jump on top of you and have sex with you. Like, no questions <laughs> asked. <laughs> Guaranteed. Or your money back. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, yes, that's the great exciting news of the day. But in, in, in other exciting news, we have a new segment. Dun, da, da. Da, 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 da. This is kind of a <laughs> good one. <laughs> it's kind of a small little segment, but we kind of figured it'd be a good thing to do right before the downloadable content reviews. So what what, what it's called is Retro Amazing News. Retro Amazing News. Retro Amazing. Retro Amazing oh. News. 
Exactly, yeah, we need that in the background. <laughs> like the whole like ticker thing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Makes you feel professional. Yes. Uh, and this segment is literally just a little bit of a shout out to a couple of news stories that went on during the week that are off that are not, you know, the topic we're covering that have something to do with retro stuff. Because we figured, you know, some things deserve shout outs. So retro amazing news. <laughs> 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 I'm going to see how many times I can get away with that. Topher, please get away with it as much as you like, because it puts a smile on my face every time <laughs> you do it. Um, so this week, the first thing in the Retro Amazing... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, there's a Destructoid community member named Cranium. And I don't know if I can put this into words. For you, for you that that for all of you people that that read destructoid.com, you probably have already seen this, but on the homepage today, which is Thursday, Cranium just finished a costume for his son. Two costumes actually for his son, and I I think they're both sons, but maybe I'm wrong about that. One of them yeah. is such a little baby and that stage where you can't tell if they're a boy or a girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> but one is definitely a son. And he made two costumes for them, handmade. One of them is a Mega Man costume. And one of them is a pit costume from Kid Icarus. The pit costume is amazing unto itself, but the Mega Man costume has has to have an extra shout out because it is quite possibly I, I think I don't know if you guys agree with me, the greatest Halloween costume I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And not only is it on this like little that. kid who's so cute, and it makes him look—it's like this—it's like this foam looking, like it's like a—I don't know what it's, what it's made out of, but it looks kind of like extra soft and fluffy, and it's a Mega Man costume, almost perfectly identical to the character, but he actually made a light that goes inside of the Mega Buster gun, so it's like a light up gun, and it, I think even the sides of the helmet light up. It pretty much is the coolest costume I've ever seen, and the little kid in it is rid- ridiculously cute. So you have to go on. Destructor.com and check the story out. Um, I guess you can search for Mega Man costume or something, but it's uh, the greatest thing ever. So we have to give him a shout out and tell him that he's amazing and he is probably the coolest person that ever lived. Yeah, pretty much. The yeah. coolest dad. Oh, and, and definitely the coolest dad. And this kid, yeah. oh, <laughs> there's a picture. <laughs> <laughs> the ball oh, gosh. This makes me I so know. happy. There's a picture of this of his son. <laughs> Like with his arm. Oh, it's so cute. Literally, it's almost making me pass out. It's so cute. It's like the kid, <laughs> his son is in the costume and he has this like giant like Chad face smile on his face. Just like this giant smile with like – and he has his arms straight up in the air and like he photoshopped him in like the Mega Man game. And it says something like, now I'm going through the boss door. <laughs> 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 and like I literally like lost my mind. I I fell off my chair. I was like so happy. I I think I ran around. I was like whoa 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 like in a, in, a, in like a circle like <laughs> like, like a little powwow. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically, it's pretty much the greatest thing ever. So, uh, Cranium, you have my mad respect and love, and I think you're awesome. And I think your son's awesome. And your son slash daughter is awesome. Slash <laughs> daughter. Um. And in other news, retro amazing news, <laughs> um, Mother 3 transla- fan translation is finally done! Yes! yes. Now this is actually <laughs> huge news. Um, as a lot of people know, the Mother 3 translation has been going on for God. It seems like years. Actually, it might be years. Yeah, I think it has been quite a while. It has. Yeah, um... And it's officially done. I don't know if it's like you can download it as of this show, but I think this weekend it will be available to download the patch and the ROM. And now I hate promoting it because you know how I feel about R4s and all this illegal stuff. <sighs> but <laughs> you can obviously download the em- or emulate it on online and you can, and you know, you don't have to own, technically you don't have to own the Japanese game, although you should because then you're getting it legally. It's but hard to you don't, find though. But you're right, it is completely hard to find. And it's expensive. So, and Nintendo is not releasing it, so in a way it's kind of just like... Yeah. A slap to Nintendo saying, see what you get for not releasing it. So I said, if you won't yeah. give it to me, I'm taking it. Yeah. Yep. And it's a pretty <laughs> good translation. I went on the website and I was reading some of their snippets. Um, so good. Yeah. And the translation is actually really strong. It, they, they worked really hard and it's not just like a rush job. Obviously, it's not a rush job. It took forever. But yeah. so this weekend is like a historic week for us. And I know on one of the shows, I think I might have said, someone said, I think it might have been me. And I feel kind of like I'm eating crow. But I think I said the week that the. The translation is done. I'm go- we're going to do a uh, Earthbound episode. So, uh, oops. 
<laughs> just it's pretend, okay. Pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> Whatever, you I ain't the boss of us. We do what we want. <laughs> so we'll maybe we'll do it. We'll, of course, we're going to do an Earthbound show someday. I mean, that's obviously like not, not like that's yeah. obviously going to happen. So we'll just do it sometime soon. Let's just say that. Yes. And move on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that was it for the retro Maisie news. Topher. 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 Oh, didn't 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 didn't. Why is it never any less funny? It's just funny. Uh, that's going to be funny every time he does it. So hopefully he does it every week because that makes me happy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that was the, that the news this week, the retro Maisie news. Oh, damn it. Didn't 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 didn't. <laughs> All right, so next week we'll be back with some more news. Um, so, yeah, so now on to downloadable content. This might be for the Wii. I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to speak for the Xbox because we'll let Topher do that. But I'm just going to say this might be the best, or at least in the top three weeks for the Wii in general. Yeah, I'm having a hard time content. recollecting a better week for yeah. both. We wear yeah. and combine virtual. them exactly because usually it's one or the other. But this week, man, who it is like head. It's so good that we dedicate an entire episode to one of the downloadable content things. So you can't. This weekend is obviously the best week ever. So obviously, I don't need to talk about Secret of Mana, which is for Super Nintendo, which is 800 Wii points. It's a no brainer. Download the damn game. It's maybe not as expensive on e- as on eBay as it used to be, but it's still you know. A semi-expensive game for for being Super Nintendo, and it's eight dollars on the on the Wii on Virtual Console. You can't beat which that. is like a steal. It's a huge steal, and it looks amazing. Like with steal. with like the you know with the way that they just did the graphics on like the on the blow, blowing it up on your high def TV, it looks gorgeous. It and also oh the most important thing we'll get into this later is you know you can play three players at the same time on the Super Nintendo, but you have to have a multi-tap. It's complicated. A lot of people couldn't do it. But on the Wii, all you have to do is take three Wii motes, turn them all on, all wireless, done. Three That's players, amazing. co-op. It's, it, it doesn't get any better than that for eight bucks. So take, like, after the show is over, just run to your Wii, take off your shirt, download the game, <laughs> eat some ice run cream, the house. and you'll have literally the best weekend ever. So, yeah, we'll, but we're obviously going to get to Secret <laughs> of Mana later. So enough said about that. The second game, yeah, there, even though I don't know why they even released the second game, there was no need. But it's Street Fighter 2, which of course is great. But unfortunately, it's the Genesis version, which is not so great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't want to like get too much on it because then I don't want to end on a negative note. But if you had to choose one, <laughs> obviously choose Secret of Mana. This really wouldn't be that hard of a Sophie's choice. If Meryl Streep had to decide between Secret of Mana <laughs> and Street Fighter 2, <laughs> Genesis version. I think she would easily choose Secret of Man. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't make a very good movie. She probably wouldn't win an Oscar. <laughs> before, before the before the Nazi even asked her the question, she'd be like Secret of Man. <laughs> It'd be like the end credits. <laughs> oh man! Oh my God. So we'll just end on that note and say Secret of Man is amazing. Period, and then go on to Topher because I'm really curious to hear about a game that has a really cute name. <laughs> <laughs> so for I know nothing about these two games, so I'm actually very interested in it. But one of them has the cutest name ever for a game, and I'm really hoping it's good. Crazy Mouse. Crazy Mouse. Any game named Crazy Mouse has to be good. I'm hoping. Oh, Chad, how naive. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. Well, cute. all right. It looked cute though. It was like a little mouse, and it was like a. Th- I don't know. <laughs> Show me it. Enlighten, enlighten me. Show me the light, Topher. Show me the light. Yeah, well, take the screenshots that you saw and print them out on a piece of paper and cut out the little pictures and then tape them to your TV, and that's pretty much what you end up with. Oh. <laughs> Ouch. The graphics don't really move so much. Wow. It's kind of like stickers just dancing around on the screen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's not good. This is the <laughs> game that was developed in China. Yeah. And uh, is the first XBLA game to come out of China, which is fun because there's no Xbox in China. <laughs> so it's probably made by like some seven-year-olds that were like chained up in a warehouse. <laughs> what a terrible thing to say, Chad. <laughs> that was awesome. I can't believe you just said that. Wait, that was yeah, a horrible I, thing to I say, was really? Like what? It was okay. awesome. I don't understand. 
there has been so many jokes about that and about stuff like that. And I say it, and then everyone thinks it's a t- terrible thing. Am I really that terrible? No, no, you're not terrible, but it's a terrible thing to say. It's kind of like seeing like a black man eating watermelon and commenting on it on the okay, side. Okay, no, that was not at all like that. Oh, I feel <laughs> terrible. I take it back. I take it back. I was just making a terrible joke. I totally take it back if it was if it was anything like a, a racist joke at all. Even though that the game probably was made by five-year-old Chinese kids. <laughs> well, it plays like it was, anyway. Um, I feel you, terrible. Okay, you, you're a mouse, and you run around the screen and eat cheese. And that's it. And it's not fun, like Rat Maze. I was going to say, because Rat Maze is really fun. Rat Maze is fucking awesome. I think that's why I think I was excited about this, because it reminded me a little bit of Rat Maze. When I no, it doesn't. Oh. Sorry. Well, that's sad. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess the best part about this uh, review was my horrible racist comment. <laughs> Isn't it always? I feel terrible. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not going to say anything about this next game. I'm going to keep my mouth closed because I'm going to dig myself into another hole. <laughs> the next game is Age of Booty. Booty! Booty! Booty. Whatever... Well, here I go. I guess I just broke my thing because I'm going to keep talking because I like to talk. Booty. Whenever I saw, whenever I see the name Age of Booty, I keep thinking of that Ratchet and Clank game, Quest for Booty. And it really, for... confu- it really confuses me because I really thought that's what this was and I got all confused. I was like, why is this coming on the Xbox? <laughs> and I, I'm sorry, Chad. And then, oh, I Chad. Got, and then I was sad. But then I yeah. realized it was dumb. <laughs> this is not a game about statutory rape. <laughs> <laughs> it's about pirates. Oh, no. I just got it. <laughs> oh, it's over. You're the best. <laughs> The best thing about when when that type of laugh comes out of Chad is that you don't know whether it's going to be like 10 or 15 seconds long or whether it's going to be one of the attacks. <laughs> yeah, you never Sometimes know. Sometimes we like... have to stop the podcast and I have to edit that out. <laughs> yeah, it's I like... I apologize. No, 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 no. Do not apologize. Oh, no, I save them on my hard drive and I listen to them yeah. before I read it. <laughs> <laughs> because if you feel if Those you feel precious. sad like ever 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 it makes you feel so much better. Oh, it's Let's true. You laugh it does make me feel better. It would kind of creep me out if someone made it their ringtone and I was just like walking through the grocery store one day and all of a sudden, like from like the vegetable section, I heard like it laugh at like a like a digital version of it. I'd be like, what the. What the? I would freak. I would probably just like. I would probably just like jump into the bananas like in a panic. Just like dive into the pile of bananas. <laughs> It'd be like ah. Oh, anyway, goodness. sorry, Topher. Age of Booty. <laughs> That's not funny anymore. That? I'm gonna stop doing that. I think it's funny. Um, I'm still laughing. Age of Booty is a strategy checkery, boardy game oh? about pirates. Oh, it is about pirates. Yeah. And it's strategy. Is it good? Checkery. I don't know. I hate that. I can't do that. I can't do the strategy. Uh, I remember when you, because they haven't had a strategy game in a while, but I remember back in the day when they had one like every week, you would always be like, oh, look, another strategy game, and I'm annoyed. <laughs> yeah, when that stuff happens, I just can't, you know, whatever. I can tell you what it is, and if strategy is up your alley, and if pirates are up your alley, then this game's up your alley. Mm. Otherwise, and otherwise, you'd be oh, wasting 800 points. Yar, in your pirate game. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. So this doesn't sound like a great Xbox Live week. You can sail the seven seas and fork and knife and whatever. And... I like pirates though. Me too. Yeah, so, maybe it's not this type of pirate. Maybe I'll check it out and just kind of see if I like it because I I like strategy games. And I like pirates, so this might be interesting. But if it's a, if it's a poorly made strategy game, I'm not gonna like it. Yeah, I don't know. It might be good. You guys should go look. Why do I have to do all the work all the time? <laughs> go see Topher, that's your job. All right. Well, how about a yard sale? Do you ha- is there one? Um, nah. Yeah, no. Nah. Doesn't sound like it. There's a. Uh, 
There was going to be one, but then it got pillaged. <laughs> That's a damn shame. Waka waka. Wackety <laughs> schmackety do. How about a Slurpee? No. No. Well, I mean, no. isn't there a size? Isn't that your rating? Like a rum-flavored rum Slurpee. It's a small rum-flavored Slurpee. Oh. Oh, that actually sounds good. It does. It's probably better than this week deserves. Served but... in a, is it served in like a, like, a, like a mug? Like one of those mugs that they use? You know what I'm talking about? That yeah. have like grog in it? <laughs> grog. Grog? Wow, I can't believe you pulled that word out just now. Thank you. I know, I was like, grog. Grog. Thanks. Nice, Chad. Yes. That was and a good one, I, Chad. And that's why I'm still a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that as being realistic. <laughs> no, I, I lost my virginity when I was six. You're a little... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Age of Booty, this week on... <laughs> this conversation is really, getting fucked I'm officially up. not talking for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> I blame my allergies. Collector! Oh. <laughs> wow. Collect. Okay. Actually, I'm really excited about this week, so uh, take as much time as you need, because this is such an amazing week for you, so I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. It's but, very exciting. Yeah. I have to admit that of the two, it's it's very difficult to decide, but between the games I'm talking about and the virtual console games, I'm only slightly more excited about Secret of Mana because it's one of my favorite games of all time. Well, I but, mean, yeah, rightfully so. Right, but considering the quality of what normally comes out on WiiWare, you know, this is a pretty exciting week. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to talk about the game that's not World of Goo to get it out of the way, because World of Goo is what we want to talk about. Yes. Um, but the other game is called Art Style Cubello, and guess what? It's a puzzle game. Um, <laughs> six, 600 points, you move colored cubellos, which are little colored cubes around, and it's kind of like you shoot them, and then you try to connect four or more of the same color, and it's a puzzle game, and you really don't need to download it. I'm going to make it really, really easy on you. You don't need to download it. <laughs> um, it sounds like a yummy just, candy bar. Yeah, it sounds gotta, good. Like it sounds. I know, like Cubello, candy. like like a white chocolate bar. Or it's, but it's yeah. good. Sadly, it's not. <laughs> um, but let's talk about World of Goo. Okay, <gasps> first of all, if you're one of those people that's like, "Oh, Castle Crashers was so expensive," meh, you're gonna whine about the price of this game because it's fifteen hundred Wii points. Which is fifteen dollars. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's one of the most expensive games that's come out for WiiWare so far. However, it's probably one of the best games that's come out for WiiWare so far. I would say it's probably in the top three best games. And it's on not WiiWare. about Bukake. Yeah, it's not about Bukake. <laughs> although if you if you look at the logo, <laughs> you could kind of talk yourself into thinking that it was because there's like a white splooge in the middle. Ew. But <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> So if you don't know anything about World of Goo or you haven't read any previews on Destructoid before, um, basically it's a physics-based puzzle construction game. Now, I know I just said puzzle game, which is like a dirty word. Dif but it's, it's not, different, though. Yeah, it's not the same thing. I would say, I wouldn't use the word puzzle to describe it. It really is very much a construction game. It was made, the cool thing about this game, it was made by two guys, just two guys, which mm -hmm. is just awesome. And it's got a ton of personality. It's really happy. Um... And but not annoying. So so. The goos are adorable. They're just, you know, little black goos with tiny little faces and they make little noises. And so basically what you do is you grab like talking little squirming blo globs of goo to build structures like bridges, cannonballs, zeppelins, whatever. And it's really cool. It starts really simple and you're like, wait a minute, all I'm doing is like pulling these little bits of goo to the top. This is really easy. It's like three or four levels in when you really start to see how much time went into the physics of the game and mm -hmm. how careful you have to be with the way that you build structures or they'll collapse. Or you, it, it, it takes a lot. It looks really easy at first, but it takes a lot more thought than you would originally assume. Um, after you get in a few levels, the you get into the world of Goo Corporation and you're able to like share this game with your friends. This is actually a game that it'd be worth it to connect up on the Wii with other people and see what mm -hmm. they're doing. Because when you go into the world of Goof Corporation, you can build your own tower and you can see other people's towers, which is really cool. It's just a really neat game. It's really neat. It's innovative, just really different. And I would have to say that if 
you're going to download anything on WiiWare and you've already downloaded stuff like Lost Winds and, you know, the few good things that have come out on for the system that you should totally download this game. It's just, it's fun and it's smart and you're totally supporting these two guys who clearly poured their heart and soul into making the game. So, um, yeah, World of Goo. Yep. Up to four players, too. Didn't say that, but mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah, it's really enthusiastic, really cool game. So, buy it! Yeah, I think now. I even I know Colette loved it, but I think I even loved it more than Colette because before the show I was telling her that it, honestly, it might be in my top ten games I've played this year, maybe even higher than that. I, I I just absolutely adore it. I think it's such an amazingly designed game, and like Colette was saying, like just the physics and the way you can build the towers and the way you have to figure out the puzzles. It's so ingenious and it's so addictive, and it's just such a nice like breath of fresh air. It's so different, you know. So yeah, I highly recommend it. Yeah, and not to mention, who knows when the next time is that we'll get a good WiiWare title. My guess is that it's going to be like another two months. So Yeah, take advantage yeah. of it. Yeah, you mm-hmm. should, um, and you should not, get it you... if you want a good game to play. And Actually, I'm sorry. You know what? I didn't mention Mega Man, and I totally forgot to mention Mega Man as another, like I said, other than Lost Winds. But I mean, obviously, Mega Man is just a given. That's a given, yeah. That'll but, always have the reign as the best WiiWare game of all time. I don't think, even much. if like... I don't think anything could top that. I'm just going to make the call now. <laughs> yeah, it'd be hard to top that. Um, yeah, but World of Goo is amazing. So with the World of Goo, Secret of Mana, like, uh, you know, Wonder Twin Power activate. One-two punch combo. Or no, it's the, and, and you're, you're Wonder, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Your Wonder Twin thing was way better than mine. <laughs> um, it really is, like, the best week ever. So, Colette, do you want to say best week ever at the same time with me? We've never done this before. Yeah. And this is like our moment to like combine our powers. I would join you to Topher, but it doesn't sound like it was the best week ever in your world. No, that's okay. <laughs> All right, Clay, you ready? Count down. Count of three. One, two, three. Best, best week, week ever! Pew, pew. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Yeah. Oh, happy. <laughs> that made me really happy. So yeah, on that note, um, we'll be back to talk about um, one of the games that makes up the best week ever, Secret of Mana. So, break! Let's go! Last week, I asked all of you to come up with words or phrases that encapsulated the feeling of, either the feeling of or the actual concept of when you're playing, say, a side scroller and you see, you know, a little life symbol and then times, you know, three or something like that. And then you die three times, you think, oh god, I'm going to get a game over. And then it turns out that the game counts zero as a life. So you get one more try as your, as the, as the uh, screen says, you know, lives time zero. So zero counts as life. What do you call that? And, uh, Got some, got some, um, some responses here. Wilbo, uh, no, I'll save Wilbo for last because he's got my favorite. Funky goodness called it the soul boner for reasons I cannot even begin to comprehend, and won't even try and visit. Uh, Psycho diagnostic called it the unanticipated nun up, one of my favorites. I like that a lot. Nephus zero or Nephus zero called it the sudden cipher. I don't actually know what cipher means, so. I mean, it sounds good. It sounds like well, it sounds like the name of some sort of, sort of bad Rainbow Six Metal Gear Solid knockoff title that someone just sort of ham-handedly throws together using third-party support, and you know gets released in Russia for like three dollars, and people get conf- the only reason people would ever buy it is because they get confused because it's so generic and it's horrible and it's it basically you know sub 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 bargain bin shit sudden cipher. Uh, Opeth two one one two had a bunch of them. Uh, he. Fr- I'll just go ahead and list them. The fifth beetle, beetle as in uh, John, Paul, George, and Ringo, not dung. Uh, the missing link, the golden parachute, and this is one phrase. If you pause the game for three days and then continue, you could call him Jesus. And one life to love. Those are all Opeth 2112s. Uh, my favorite from, from Wilbo, he gave me two. Uh, the first one was the true last guy, which is kind of cool. And the other one was the hidden savior, which is probably my favorite, just because it sounds very epic, and uh, it's it's sort of a, a more serious, truncated version of of the the pause three days and call him Jesus thing. So 
The Hidden Savior is my favorite by Wilbo. But, like I said, like I'll always say, uh, there's no prize for being my favorite. So make it that what you will. It doesn't really mean anything. But thank you guys for, for, for submitting those. This week, or for next week, rather, um, what do you call it? And, and this sort of takes a, a, a degree of value judgment on your part, because I hate it when games do this. I absolutely despise it. But a lot of people seem to like it. What do you call it when a game starts out with a very, very, very um, serviceable, perfectly enjoyable, but relatively realistic plot? And then, as the game progresses, gets more and more and more ridiculous and turn, turns into this huge clusterfuck of conspiracies and other bullshit. So, for, exa- for example, um, Max Payne starts off, it's just about a guy avenging his wife and his kid's death. No big deal. Undercover cop? Cool. Just give me bullet time sequences. Then, all of a sudden, it turns into this enormous conspiracy with some sort of drug that's being made by the government, and Max goes into an underground lab and has to shoot people and kill an old lady with a helicopter, and it gets really, really over the top real, real quick um, for no reason. Far Cry, the original Far Cry. It's not just about a dude in an awesome Hawaiian shirt going around shooting people on an island. It's also about aliens and, and... crazy shit and monsters coming out of the the crazy island and it doesn't really make any sense but it's i guess it's fun kind of i don't like it other people do or let's say assassin's creed it's it's not just a game about stabbing people in you know as in the holy land it's about the future and veronica mars is missing a finger and you're playing the worst game ever and your main character has a hoodie and that's what do you call it that that sense of escalation to ludicrous degrees because obviously the word escalation on its own stands for it, but what do you call it when it gets so over the top, so cre- incredibly different from what it was, that you would almost think that they're two different games? Now, your definition is obviously going to be moved by whether or not you like that st- kind of stuff or you hate it. But um, as always, it can be either one word or two word phrase. Or actually, I'm not even abiding by those rules anymore, so whatever. Just send me something that's like less than a sentence and send it to reverendanthony at gmail.com or anthony at destructoid.com. Those are the only two things I'm going to check anymore. If you send it to, you know, online, other shit, I probably won't be able to see it. Uh, That's all for this week. Thank you for your definitions, and here we go again with some music by Nine Gamer. (laughs) 